Well, hello and welcome to Speak Life. My name is Nate Morgan Locke, and here we have another edition of Blokes Worth Watching, the show that identifies <laughs> blokes who are coming up within the church, worth watching, worth keeping your eye on, and how we can uh, funnel them into full time ministry. Put them on the conveyor belt. That's right. Churn them out. I am joined by another bloke who you're watching, a young up and comer. Uh, well, according to Evangelicals Now, right. or Evangelical Snow, as I sometimes call it. Uh, uh, do you also say 100-foot hose instead of 10, <laughs> 10 of those? <laughs> that was my other one. Yeah, okay. Uh, it says, Glenn Scrivener, Evangelical Futures. <laughs> now, it's worth saying that yeah. your name is resting on Evangelical Futures, but in fact... Evangelical, the evangelical future is resting on my name. It's resting on you. Glenn. Is that right? Um, right. The reason the why we've well. <laughs> called this uh, extraordinary meeting is uh, to address this article that you've written in Evangelical Snow. Um, and it is called, I hope wow. it is there in the center spread, page 17 of the July 2022 edition. BWWs, the blokes worth watching conveyor belt uh glenn what's the gist of this argument well i it just goes to show that they are much better headline writers than i am my my working title was mm. i i'm even ashamed to say what what my my come on come on all right what did you write i wrote wonky wonky trellis wonderful vine wonky trellis wonderful vine and now you know why they changed it spiced it up yeah, they they put yeah. a frame on it, which I think yeah. probably got more people to read it than yes. your wonky trellis <laughs> or vine would have done. Although that yes. would have established uh, trellis and the vine. Yes. Which you reference in the first sentence. Yeah. So, yeah, the first thing I reference is The Trellis and the Vine, which is the name of a 2009 book by Col Marshall and Tony Payne that talks about um, church structures that are necessary in order for the vine to do its thing. And part of the, the article is talking about whether our structures are yeah. fit for purpose, whether they've become wonky, and uh, therefore whether they have kind of trained the vine to go in certain directions. Now, one of the things I raise in the article is the BWWs, which I was only um, alerted to while I was at Bible college. Okay. And somebody came to Bible college who was uh, very much a champion of the BWWs and this whole system of church leaders identifying blokes worth watching. Yep. And taking them from whatever future they might have had in mm. industry or education or the arts or yeah. whatever and getting them onto the conveyor belt towards ministry training and yeah. Bible college and ordination to become the one who watches the blokes to identify the next generation of blokes worth watching. And <clears throat> yeah. although I'd never seen it diagrammed and it was diagrammed and although I'd never heard the acronym before, things started to make sense okay. about why the vine had gone in certain directions because yeah. of this particular trellis. So the, tre the, the system is designed to produce, or, or the, the results are the, the, the come straight out of the system. So yeah. you look at the, um, the way that that ministry philosophy has sort of come about and you say, well, this is all intentional. Um, but blokes worth watching, I don't think that's the original definition of those terms bww right yeah the acronym what, I, what actually, i've learned through twitter is that the right. acronym originally referred to boys worth watching yeah and it was part of the camps scheme yes so that you were which which again is something else that i reference in the article part of the trellis that has produced this particular subculture mm -hmm. within the evangelical church has been based in the camps system in which you have you know, the 30 top public schools sending their yeah. top pupils, their top boys, to yeah. the camps to be discipled, and they were boys worth watching. Mm -hmm. And then here is another example of the ways in which the camp system has not simply produced camps and produced yeah. boys from the camps, but has produced a, a culture beyond the camp system. And it has been more widely a, a culture-wide phenomenon whereby instead of looking at the young 13-year-old mm -hmm. from Harrow, yeah. you're looking at the young 22-year-old who's studying at Warwick University yeah, or whatever, yeah. and, and they yeah. are the one that you are priming for a particular kind of ministry. Which again, you know, someone like a John Stott, who was right in on the ground floor of some of these camps, 
and um, and certainly a, a part of that system, nevertheless, would be sort of turning over in his grave if you talked about ministry mm, when what you way. really meant yeah, yeah, yeah. was yeah. full-time pastoral yeah. church yeah. ministry on the staff of a church. Um, but that's part of the conveyor belt. We want to take yeah. boys, blokes. and Yeah, and you can sort of see in, in that public school system that, uh, well, they're generally, you know, boys' schools, and there are boys who are worth watching in a whole bunch of different areas. There are boys who are being thought of, oh, maybe he's going to be a new cricket captain, or Mm -hmm. this lad will be a great asset to have on the first 15, or this person is destined for, you know, greatness in this particular area. And so you can see how the boys' worth watching dynamic is then just applied wholesale without real biblical critique to um, the, the... the ministry mm. juggernaut, which sort of comes out <laughs> the back of that. Yeah. Um, but of course, when you're referring to it, blokes worth watching, um, I believe that's a much more Australian term. It was the signification. The of, signification of, that. of the yes. public school system. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, hence bloke. Um, and it was it was certainly someone from Sydney yeah. who was um, articulating this particular ministry philosophy. Okay. Um, and you know you can go to one Timothy two verse two, yeah, for biblical warrant in which Paul is telling Timothy to identify you know yeah. elders for the church and those yeah. to whom he can pass on the baton um, of of church ministry. Um, but I, I don't think that necessitates. The, the same conveyor belt that we're talking about here. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to look at the the burden of Paul's writings and then the burden of the pastoral epistles, I don't think you get a BW, BWW system. Yes. Well, not many of you are from noble birth. I mean, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it sort of slightly undermines the whole blokes worth watching kind of thing. Um, let me push back a little yeah, yeah. on this, right? Because I, it sounds as though uh, on on the, the Twitter sphere... This has been overwhelmingly positive. Lots of people going, oh, this BWW thing. Mm-hmm. Glenn, you've you've identified something that we all kind of knew. You've named it and you brought it out into the open. Let me just uh, ask a couple of questions that might help you to sort of qualify some of the stuff here. First question is, what year was this conversation that you had with this uh young man on your prospective student day for Bible college. What year are we talking? So I I mentioned a time when I am taken around the Bible college with my wife as we're trying to weigh up which seminary that we'll train in for Anglican ministry. This would therefore have been about 2003. Okay. Um, And and there's lots to be said about that. So in, in the conversation he said, are you looking at any other colleges? And I said, yes, there's a college that others Mm -hmm. of my friends are going to. Wouldn't it be fun to do um, theology with them? And he said, well, you don't want to go to that particular college that I named because there at the end of a lecture, they say, it could be this, it could be this, or it could be that. You don't want that. You want the answer. And I said, well, what happens if you happen to disagree with the answer that's given at this establishment? He said, they'd shoot you down. Yeah. With, with sort of tongue in cheek, if they'd shoot you down. I said, really? He said, oh, they're, they're very thought through. And I said, well, mm. what if you bring Bible verses? How would they handle that? And he was instantly, like, interested. Mm. Like, what do you want to disagree about? Yeah, and yeah. I was like, well, I don't know yet. Yeah, um, yeah. Now, is that what I found at this institution? I found at this institute, I'm just, it was Oak Hill. It was Oak Hill Theological yep. College uh, in North London. What I found was a very rich theology that was given. I think I was I was pressed there to study biblical, biblical languages mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. a depth that I would never um, have been pushed to in other places. I think I was pushed systematically. Yeah, I think I was pushed to read in church history in ways um, that uh, I perhaps wouldn't have been at other institutions. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I did find that there was a rich um, theology there to be yeah. um, enjoyed and pressed into and actually, at the end of my article here, I say one of our one of the great dearths in our little subculture mm. is that we always preference the the thumbnail evangelistic outline instead of the theology yeah. and yeah. the richness of the theology. So, I I would say that circa two thousand and four, um, the lectures that I heard at this college um, 
were, were not the same as the caricature that this student gave, mm-hmm. though the caricature was recognizable. Yeah. Um, and I... And I would say there were certain issues uh, which I would have considered to be secondary matters that were considered to be beyond the pale. And I was told I was outside the camp right. for certain views okay. that I thought, this is, this is yep. odd. This is odd. So, um, so it's, a, it's a mixed report, really. I, I think I did find a theologically rich education there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also found some of these cultural issues that we're talking about. And... The, this particular lecture in which blokes worth watching is right. proclaimed with its signification um uh w- in which you're told that that's around the same sort of time so that's 2005 right. maybe yeah. something like that yeah. okay yeah so but we're talking about something that's nearly 20 years ago mm. and at the just just mark the difference for me between <clears throat> there is a single conversation with a student Mm. who might just have, you know, be a particular oddball. He's a fanboy for a college. That's why he's showing prospective students around because he wouldn't yeah. want them to yep. go anywhere else. Yep. And there is a single lecture yep. of this new ministry dynamic, blokes worth watching. Yeah. It's not individual cases, mm. but it also wasn't your general experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How is how would you say that given that particular time nearly twenty years ago, it was a culture that was recognizable, it was a caricature that was recognizable, and now yeah. nearly twenty years on yeah. from that? Yeah, I think that's fair enough. In in terms of that conversation with one student that was taking me around, um, part of that tour, we were introduced to the dining room in which a motto is on the wall: "Be mm-hmm. right and persist." Yeah. Um, which was also uh, seemed to go hand in hand with that kind of mentality. Um, we have got it all sewn up. Yeah. The, on- the only thing to do is to keep going with this mm-hmm. and those who are on the outside are, are kind of threatening. So that, that conversation um, is just one conversation. Mm-hmm. The motto, though it was not the motto of the Bible College, it was the motto of the found, uh, a founding family of the college, and it was something under which we ate our lunch sort of every yeah. day. And, and but it was um, written in English; it wasn't written in Latin. It, it, it might have it might have sounded, you know, slightly less prosaic and naff put if it, it was in Latin. Put it in Latin. There's the yeah. th- there's the answer. There's the answer. That's the Just solution. Put it in Latin because only blokes worth watching. <laughs> Will recognize we'll understand what Latin. it means. <laughs> it's your answer to everything, isn't it, Nate? Gnosticism. That's what I <laughs> Just put it in Latin. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so that one conversation is one conversation. Um, I think the blokes worth watching thing has been a strategy. Mm. And, it, and it has recognizably shaped uh, certain parts of the trellis. Okay. And I think in, the, in whatever pushback there's been on this, nobody's pushed back on the fact that that has been a thing, that it has been yeah. a shaping thing. Um, and certainly in those who have been sympathetic to the article, it's something that's really leapt out at people. And and so there's women who, so Nay Dawson and Sarah Pike, I've sort of retweeted on, on my Twitter, if, if you want to find it. Um, they've talked about their own experiences and how the, the blokes worth watching conveyor belt has shaped things for them. But also men yeah, saying, well, I, Either I was overlooked because I wasn't the kind of bloke that was yeah. worth watching, or I recognized in myself that I was trying to project the certain attributes that they were looking for, mm-hmm. and there was a pick shallowness me. to it. Pick me, pick me, senpai. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, there's there's all sorts of distorting things that have gone on, and I and I think perhaps they they chose the right headline in that because I think that's mm-hmm. that's found a lot of sympathy. So so I, I would say on the BWWs. That is definitely uh, a goal and a strategy mm. that has been stated many times and that has been followed through many times. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Is is Twitter more populated by those who weren't considered blokes worth watching than those who were? Right. It uh, does the democratization of yeah. it gives a voice like social media yeah. mean that people who were overlooked for whatever reasons yeah that therefore the, an article like this is going to get a lot more traction there than yeah than elsewhere well many fewer people are going to be invited by evangelicals now mm. to write on the article and anyone can tweet you know yeah 
So um, absolutely, it gives, it gives a voice to those who have been overlooked by systems. Mm -hmm. um, and interestingly, I think the pushback that I've had, probably, probably just two individuals mm -hmm. out of scores of people who have gotten in touch very positively, um, two individuals have sort of pushed back somewhat, but neither of them have done it on Twitter. And I can understand why, you know, as, as soon as you get retweeted a few times, then the conversation is flowing in one direction mm -hmm. and it would be very difficult for someone yeah, yeah. to swim back in the yeah. other direction, even though I, you know, put out there, I recognize that on Twitter, people are yeah. sympathetic to this. Is there pushback? Love to hear it. Mm -hmm. um, and would still love to hear it. And I'll... I'll watch the letters to the editor in the next edition, and I'm I'm quite sure there will be some. Yeah, and is part of the reason that you felt that you needed to write this because you felt you were overlooked as a bloke worth watching? Hmm. Is there any sense in which you you decided hmm. that you didn't want to play the pick me game? Yeah, yeah, yeah removed yourself from that and therefore had a, an a ability to look yeah. from the outside and critique. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm the smart Alec, so I would be the smart Alec at the back of the lectures anyway, kind of mm -hmm. sticking my hand mm -hmm. up, sticking my oar in, you know. Yeah. So at, at Bible College, at the, at the end, you're meant to sort of do a little biography of yourself for prospective church leaders <laughs> because they might pick you. Right, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> But instead of playing the game about, you know, what a safe pair of hands I might be if you were to give me a curacy, um, I, just, I just picked um, 1 Kings 18 verse 13 where Obadiah says to Elijah, Did you not hear what I did when King Ahab was persecuting the prophets of the Lord? I hid them in caves in 50s and kept, kept them fed and watered mm. for three years. And this is my verse for Bible college. This is what Bible college is. You know? and so I was like, <laughs> Bible college is basically hiding prophets of the Lord away from persecution, mm -hmm. just keeping them fed and watered for three years while they debate eschatology or something like that. Wow. You know? And so... I've always been that kind of, you know, voice crying in the wilderness yeah, okay. sort of person. I don't want to play your game. It's yeah. a reverse snobbery. I get that. And yet, uh, Glenn Sen Ropes, I'm a centerfold. You're a centerfold, page 17. <laughs> yes. And if I, well, it goes on to page 19 as well. Go a little bit further down. You're on page 20, Everyday Evangelism. <laughs> Go a little bit further again through Evangelical Snow. And what do we find? Oh, yeah. How Christianity Shaped Up, oh, a review about? of oh, really? The Air We Breathe by oh. the Reverend Glenn Scrivener. Out now from all good bookstores. Yeah. So um, how long can you play the outsider card if you are probably now one of the, maybe not a bloke worth watching, but a bloke who everyone is watching? Yeah. Yeah, my days are numbered. Voice crying in the wilderness is over, really, yeah. isn't it? And, and, and at that stage, you, you've got to therefore shoulder responsibility for some of the some yeah. of the wonky trellis yeah that you're helping to build yeah. and you know and here is speak life and speak life is as a parachurch ministry we are all trellis and no vine yeah. and so you know the mm. dangers the dangers for me and the dangers for yeah whatever well-intentioned um well-intentioned well, well desires for ministry that i have they mm. can go off because blokes worth watching was well intentioned. One hopes mm. boys mm. worth watching perhaps yeah, was well intentioned. Yeah. Be right and persist. Yeah, <laughs> seemed like Don't a good be idea. Wrong, <laughs> That's give right. up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although if you are wrong, yeah, you will maybe ought to give up. Yeah. Um, all these things are well intentioned. So is it very possible that in fifteen years' time, um, someone will decry what I'm saying? Mm. Yes. But okay, so I mean, just just lobbying, you know. Or maybe not lobbying, shining a light on a a ministry dynamic and a a what is it wonky uh, trellis. <laughs> it's not very memorable, is it? You really and you end the article with this. You talk about your, a better vision for you know the wonderful vine and how the vine ought to be, mm. and that I think is something that we obviously at Speak Life are trying to encourage people in. Cultivate, Cultivate. to use the horticultural yeah, yeah, yeah. analogy. Um, and so let's let's sort of go on to that. What what do you think is the 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 true and better option mm. than having this 
you know, sort of approach to the Bible, approach to ministry, approach to evangelism, right. whatever it might be. Right. Well, yeah. For for those who haven't read the article, I I, I talk about three areas. Uh, one is I very much appreciate our church's biblical focus. We want to handle the Bible correctly. Mm. We want to give Bible um, knowledge to people and all that kind of stuff. Of course, the shadow side to that is that we can give all Bible and no Christ, mm-hmm. which is the, the whole John 5 problem. The whole John 5 problem is you diligently study the scriptures mm. because you think in them you have eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify of me, says Christ, yeah. and you, you refuse to come to me to have life. So uh, have we been sufficiently Christ-focused mm-hmm. such that my job, if I'm preaching this Sunday on Matthew chapter 12, um Actually, that is not my job this Sunday. My job is to preach Christ from Matthew chapter 12. Mm. Or if I'm preaching from Ecclesiastes chapter 12, well, my job is to preach from Ecclesiastes chapter 12, to preach Christ from yeah. Ecclesiastes. And so I, I really want to get back to a, a kind of a Christ focus. Then another thing that I really um, genuinely appreciate from our kinds of churches is a missional focus. Evangelism mm-hmm. is a high priority. And in the churches that invite me in to do evangelistic mission, um, they've got a priority on opening up the scriptures and pointing to Jesus mm-hmm. and and saying, let's let's be biblical in our evangelism and in, in all that we do. And I love that and I love being evangelistic. But does that mean that there's a shadow side where everything is boiled down to evangelism? Mm-hmm. The, the whole point of the Sunday sermon is to get you ready for the water cooler on Monday morning to have the conversation with a co-worker about, about Jesus. And you lose discipleship, you lose worship. Mm-hmm. Do we have a, do we yeah. have a, uh, do we go to Sunday to worship the Father in the name of the Son and by the power of the Spirit? Um, or are our Sundays, do we, we don't want to freak people out. Yeah. So we want lowest common denominator. We wouldn't say lowest common denominator, but mm. we, we want to be. We want to explain everything, explain the Bible, yeah. and we want to explain. If we have any liturgy, we want to explain it, and make the, everything as smooth and mm. and outsider friendly as we possibly can. Do we trade away discipleship? Do we trade away worship there? And then ministry philosophy. I, I do like a ministry philosophy that says let's get the Bible open with people. But are we are we much more oriented around a ministry philosophy? Do we have gospel partnerships around a ministry philosophy mm-hmm. more than around a rich theology, which is, mm-hmm. is, much, is a much deeper thing? So that, that's, where the, that's where the article goes. Yeah. Um, and the th- I suppose one of the things I was thinking as I looked through some of the sort of responses you got on Twitter on, onto the article was a number of people saying, <coughs> there is a scope to this problem there, are, there are, yeah. you can sort of you can't throw a blanket over it and that's where they all are but to say there are other areas of the evangelical church even the conservative evangelical church even though people might not claim that theologically they are more conservative churches in which these types of problems aren't so uh, so obvious and aren't so acute and people aren't struggling with them in the same way mm-hmm. Is there any sense that you feel the encouragement of Elijah being told, you know, there are thousands who have not bowed the knee to Baal mm, mm. and and you don't need to feel like you're you're the only one. In fact, sort of lift your eyes and see the the there's mm. great encouragement in the vine yeah. around yeah. the church in the UK. Yeah. Um not undermining the significant problems and the abuse issues which still or unresolved in in some of yeah. conservative evangelical churches. So I I think I pledge to be thrilled wherever this stuff is transcended, mm-hmm. as long as others pledge yeah. <laughs> to be um, contrite yeah. <laughs> where this stuff holds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, so I retweeted Dave Williams, who who wrote a thought, a couple of thoughtful um, sort of blog responses uh, to this. One kind of more about the Bible College, and, and another about there there are there's more than you know. The, the, there is more to the vine than what this trellis yep. has kind of allowed there to be. And for that, I give great thanks. Um, but I, I do think there's, there's also got to be a sense of to the degree that the shoe fits, mm-hmm. will we wear it? Yep. And, I th- and I think 
it's it's my fault that the spicier stuff at the begin is at the beginning of the article, and you know the the tour with you know an impressionable student mm -hmm. um, is does capture the imagination in a way that my three points at the end of the article don't. Mm -hmm. And if people say, okay, that that story is just one story, you know, evangelicalism goes much wider than that. Mm. Okay, yeah. true, but can we can we apply these these three mm -hmm. you know tests about are we really Christ focused or just Bible people? Um, yeah, and and I, I see that everywhere, far beyond far beyond Anglican circles, mm -hmm. far beyond Anglican circles, just the desire to explain the passage. And then, like the the comeback on that. Oh no, we don't just explain the passage; we also apply the passage. And you're like, where is Jesus in that? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Well, are you heralding Jesus from the passage? No, no, we explain yeah, and yeah. apply, and that's 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 where we really. So, this problem goes way beyond Anglican circles. Um, but even even the camps thing goes way beyond the camps. You know, the talk structures for Ewan became like the early weeks of Alpha. You know, and and you know the 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 phrase in there that I think needs most grappling with is where I say our gospel presentations leave us with a dead Christ and a living resolve. Yeah, that's everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's not just you know. That's, I don't care what school you went to. Yeah, um, I don't care what Bible college you went to. That's a real problem in evangelicalism more broadly. Mm -hmm. I mean, the four points. You know, there's creation, fall, you know, redemption, and then choice. Again, John, you know, John mm, Stott's four mm. planks were creation, fall, redemption, and consummation at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. Our gospel presentations have, have boiled it down to after the cross comes the choice. Mm -hmm. And and so everything gets boiled down to you and your living resolve. The bridge diagram. Jesus has died for you, but now will you use Jesus to get to God? Mm -hmm. Will you make that choice? Will you make that resolve? You know, the choice we all face is the yeah. framework that's put around an, uh, an otherwise reformed vision for the Bible and, and evangelism. Mm -hmm. Two ways to live is framed as the choice we all face. Yeah. So there is... There are problems that go far beyond which Bible college you went to and which public school you were at. And if you, I, you know, if you've ever heard of Jonathan Fletcher or haven't heard of Jonathan mm -hmm. Fletcher, it goes far beyond that. And I, and I think um, there are conservative evangelical circles in which ministry philosophy does function as the center where theology ought to have been, mm -hmm. a rich theology ought to have been. Now. Oak Hill, I, I do think, has been part of the solution to that in some ways because I think it does offer a, a, a richer theology than you know some of the the boiled down gospel outlines um, have offered. But it's, it, it it goes broader. It goes it goes broader than you know yeah. than the constituency for evangelicals now. And yeah. if you could if you could read the responses that I'm getting via email on Facebook on Twitter, you know. Yeah. You would see it's it's a broad problem. So if we wanted to to push into any of those particular challenges, one of them might be the, uh, I mean, young, restless, and reformed was kind of you know these sort of now archaic kind of terms, but um, the Machen's warrior children. I mm -hmm. would went to Westminster Theological Seminary in Philadelphia. Mm. John Frame, notable theologian, philosopher, uh, wrote a a kind of um, diatribe against so many generations of Westminster graduates who would come out and uh, just fought battles everywhere. Mm. And they were just the most belligerent and kind of aggressive, you know, seeking out battles wherever they could find them. And there is a, a strong temptation for anyone entering Bible college and particularly for young men to go right I'm going to go I'm going to go and get some ammunition yeah and this ammunition is going to serve me well what what would you say in that situation what is the the sort of what what what's the sermon you would want to give what's the mm. thing you would want to say to a not just an individual student who took you around a classroom of students, a year group, yeah. a cohort. Yeah. Uh, not just as they, well, as they start their theological studies. 
I reference it in the article that I'm the kind of person who, of course, would choose a Bible college that says, be right and persist, because mm. I love to be right. And, you know, I tell the story about an old girlfriend of mine used to finish a number of different arguments that we had, like totally fed up and yeah. in full of exasperation. She just says, oh, Glenn, you're just so right. And then she'd storm off. Mm -hmm. And I would think I'd won. Mm. <laughs> you know, well. Convinced you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What does that make you then? Yeah. I'm right. Well, you know, chalk another one up to Glenn. Mm. And, you know, and, and when those marriage counselors say, you know, you know it's, it's, the, it's the cliched kind of advice that's given all the time. Like, would you rather be right or happy? Mm. I'm always thinking, well, how can I be happy if I'm not right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. So I, I totally identify with that to the point that before I went to, to Bible college, um, I um my there were there was a a number of things that just sort of fell apart all at once. I was at all souls laying in place. I was looking into pursuing full time pastoral ministry in the UK um, when I got deported. And then the same week that I got deported, my girlfriend of four years said, "Glenn, mm -hmm. I don't want Jesus anymore, and I don't want you." I, I've been hoping to marry her, and all of a yeah. sudden that falls apart. I go back home and discover that my parents are going through a very messy divorce that I'd had little, in, you know, uh, inkling was was happening, but it was happening um, very, very dramatically and devastatingly, and and then went into a church situation in which church abuse was happening and um, all sorts of splits were happening, and yet I fell on my face in in depression. Not so much because of all that life stuff that was happening around, mm. but because there were certain theological arguments that were happening. And that was what, that was, what was absolutely consuming me and occupying me when yeah. I should have been living my life and, and facing the mm. tragedies that were going on. Wound up in a counselor's office. And my counselor, after, after a little while, kind of pointed me to Jeremiah chapter 2 and said, look, this is what we're all like. The Lord says, you've committed two sins, my mm -hmm. people. You've, yep. you've forsaken me, the spring of living waters, and you've dug for yourself broken cisterns, broken wells that can yep. hold no water. And he said, you know, therefore, um, you're thirsty right now. Um, but there's two problems in your life, Glenn. You've, you've forsaken Jesus and you're, you're seeking life in other things. What, I, what are you seeking life in right now? Yeah. And I felt very, very keenly what the issue was. And I was able to articulate. I said, I, I need people to read the Bible the same way I do. Mm -hmm. I said, what do I do about that? He said, well, you need to repent of it. And I said, I can't. <laughs> And, it's, I, and, yeah. and the, the, the strength of me saying, I, I can't, sort of showed me the, the hooks that it got into. Yeah, yeah. Everything else is going wrong in my life, but what do I really need? I really need people to re read the Bible the same way I read the Bible. And I, I came to see, no, I actually don't need that because like, I want to be valiant for truth. Why? I want to be a warrior for Christ. Why? Mm. For Christ, no. For the truth, no. For me, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be right and to be seen to be right, yeah. And I just recognized how ugly that was. And I actually, I drove home from that session chuckling to myself. I'd been like in a slough of despond. I, I ended chuckling, repenting for this whole idea of being right and persisting, yeah. <laughs> as yeah. though this was my identity. And does that mean I don't still hold those biblical convictions? I still hold those biblical convictions, but. Hopefully, it's less about me now, mm, <laughs> and it genuinely mm. is about releasing people into the glory of Jesus in all scriptures, yeah, yeah, and yeah. hopefully that, that kind of helps people. So I, I, I guess just the self-righteousness is, is death. It's absolute death, and I don't know, maybe, maybe I'd preach to them from Jeremiah 2 or, some, or somewhere mm. else, but I, I would just say, you, you want to be right theologically. Why? Mm-hmm. And just be very suspicious of your flesh. Yeah. And then I look out at the culture and I just, I just see because we want to be right, we build these tribes. We have these, this them and us. Mm. We, be, we become very narrow, very insular. We put people outside the camp. We have our little shibboleths. We don't play nicely with other Christians. Yeah. Because they, not only do they not have our same theology, they don't, they don't even have our same ministry philosophy. <laughs> and so, mm. so that self-righteous, that, that sort of the unearned 
theological self-righteousness yep. that we have. Mm. I'd have a go at that. And I think with with men in that situation, <clears throat> they're generally studying with their careers ahead of them. Their mm. ministry is, you know, f- just one of pure potential. Right. And so what am I here to do? Well, I'm here to be trained up and I'm going to be trained well enough that I can, you know, mm. be the best I can be, a mm. man of God, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And so I'm basically looking at what, what's possible, mm. what is possible for me to do. And I suppose, yeah, just asking some of those questions around what is would you rather that christ was proclaimed Mm. um or that you got to preach Mm. you know and and the challenge of you know i remember i'm interviewing you so i won't no you talk you talk you talk i was just thinking yeah there was someone wrote an article um Oh, I think it must have been for the GoCo, the Gospel Coalition, on storytelling and children. Okay. I, I'm sure I texted you about this. And I said, <laughs> that's oh, thing. oh, look, look what, look where she went. She went to Nathan talking to David about his adultery with Bathsheba. And then she talked about John the Baptist and Herod and Herodias. I do that. <laughs> she talked about C.S. Lewis stealing past watchful dragons. That's my thing. Mm. And yeah, do you, would you rather the glorious truth was revealed to refresh and delight and and, right. and, and enliven the church? Right. Or is it you who has to kind of do it? And yeah. that, you know, to have those things taken from you yeah. and to be out of action in yeah. a way yeah. and to be told, you know, this is Jesus's church, and he's yeah. he's quite capable of running it. Yeah, and other um, people are quite capable as well. Yeah, and, and <laughs> yeah. praise God for yeah. that. It's just not a happy thing, yeah. is it? And so, like on the blokes worth watching, conveyor belt. Mm. <laughs> um, it it is as you know, senpai, notice me, notice yeah, me, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. And it's just it's just training your eyes on all the wrong things and mm. making you competitors. Yeah, with. People who are actually, you know, companions on the way. Yeah. And we all, you know, I used to say to my Westminster classmates, you know, you, you realize we all get an MDiv at the end of this. Mm. It's not like <laughs> they're only going to hand out one. Um, <laughs> oh, I've got to get it. Um, but yeah, that, that sense, the very ugly kind of, you know, uh, pride that kind of kicks in as people go into it. And then you make, you know, train, train those guys up. Oh, it's awful. It's going to be really ugly. Mm, they have to mm, be mm. Kind of brought 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 to that point of, as you say Jeremiah 2:13. Um let's go to the other one that you mentioned which I think is probably more of a evangelistic ministry is thinking about this stuff uh a dead Christ and a living resolve. Mm. And so gospel presentations which sort of say uh Jesus has done the cross thing over to you Glenn. Yeah. You know like how do we if you get an opportunity to speak on that, what do you say? <laughs> Everything. I don't know. It, it, it's because it is. It is. It is everywhere. Whether it's the four points of the bridge diagram, or um, it, 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 it is such a problem because it's it's kind of reverse engineering your gospel from heaven and hell, which are realities and mm. and and must be faced. Um, but so often it, it's like we well, you, you want to go to the good place and not the bad place, and and that is kind of the the end goal. So your end is not Christ, you know. Your your end is the good, the good place, however that's defined. And you know Jesus is is nice that he gets you there, mm-hmm. but he's instrumental, and he might be central in this instrumental sense, but you're still using him to get what you really want, mm. which is the the good life the good future whatever whatever it is or or god but god defined christlessly and so you've just you've got to begin with jesus if jesus is going to be the end of your your your, your heart if he's going to be the the goal of what you want in life then you've kind of got to begin with him hmm. rather than him coming in the middle to fix a problem that gets you this other thing that you want which is eternal life or forgiveness yeah, or yeah, yeah. fire insurance or whatever it is 
So you gotta you gotta kind of begin with Jesus. You've got to not finish with the cross. You know, you've mm-hmm. got to, you've got to have a living Christ, yeah. um, who is inviting you to Himself rather than inviting you to the the goodie bag of of abstract blessings yeah. over there. Um, you know, I'm I'm struggling yeah. not to describe three, two, one at this point, <laughs> <laughs> but you know. Yep. You, you want to put yeah. you want to put Jesus at the center and not just so Sinclair Ferguson's got a great line in in the whole Christ he says yeah. too many gospels are every blessing through Jesus Christ yeah which can sound incredibly Christ centered yeah you know every every blessing is coming through Jesus Christ but then it's Jesus mm-hmm. instrumental to get you the other stuff that you really want mm-hmm. and he he says the real gospel is every blessing in yeah. Jesus Christ yeah which is uh, you know. God is the gospel, as as sort of John Piper yeah, yeah, yeah. puts it, and yeah. and in Christological focus, you know, Christ, Christ is the gospel. Christ is the offer. Christ for yeah. you. Yeah, and that then leads us on to worship as the kind of activity, par excellence of mm. the church. Yeah, and that as opposed to this kind of perpetual, it's always lowest common denominator evangelism when we gather on a Sunday morning. So, so what it Give us a taste of that worshipful gathering of church. What is the last time when you just thought, here we are, and we are worshipping? Yeah. Uh, what was the last time that you... I mean, I was I was at a church where a guy just doing the prayers. I mean, I, I was preaching, so it was just a guy doing the prayers. Who just he just had a big vision for God, and he, he apparently loved God. Mm. And it was evident mm. that he loved God. Yeah. And... You know, I was on my knees, literally um, thanking God, enjoying God. You know, and so um, it 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 should be in all sorts of aspects of church life. And I, th- I think in our sort of church circles, we're sort of defined by what we're not. When when we're not the Catholics, we're not the liberals, we're not the Charismatics. We're the evangelicals, and and yeah. so and so. It's it sounds really strange to our Charismatic brothers and sisters. Yeah, but like. Almost the, the music is like the last place we want to <laughs> find intimacy with God because yeah, yeah. we leave that to the other people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we just, you know, we sing truths to one another to edify one another. But, you know, I know, are you worshipping God in the song? That is weird when people do that, isn't it? When they sing at you in your song. <laughs> Thanks, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because which one is it? Like Colossians and Ephesians. One, one of them says, yeah, yeah, sing, yeah. Sing, "Sing psalms to God," yeah. and the other says, "Sing, yeah. sing hymns to one another." But um, yeah. so you know, there's biblical warrant for it. But um, or when people say the grace to you, and you, no one's concentrating on the words, it's like <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with yeah. who have I left out? I just <laughs> want to. I want to say it. can we say it once and then look around <laughs> yeah yeah because that's the, <laughs> yeah the staring and the saying at the same time is quite difficult so is there a verticality yeah. to our meetings yeah. Yeah, yeah is there a verticality mm. to the to the worship um or has it all got to be horizontalized yeah, yeah. and that sort of thing yeah and and so like you really want that and you know i mean the the ema the evangelical ministry assembly that really blew the doors off 17 years ago was John Piper there and and just speaking about preaching as worship mm, I am mm. I am worshiping Christ yeah. from the pulpit and yeah. this is this is what I'm doing that's different to I'm explaining and applying the passage yeah. you know and so we 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 just we lack this this verticality yeah. and it, it's it's like we've we've fallen off entirely one side of the horse in 1 Corinthians yeah. 14 where Paul says you know when when an outsider comes in um you know, Paul Paul does say, translate your tongues so they understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. True. Mm-hmm. Th- th- there's meant to be an understandability to what's going on. But to the end that, they fall down yeah, and yeah. say, God is really among you. Mm. Not, oh, I, I followed most of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. Those, Accessibility. It was, was high scale. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We, we don't have the God is really among you thing. And we do with some of our, you know, terminologies, there's some wonderful actuallys when people say, you know, we're... Where do you go to church? Oh, the church is everywhere. Where's your church? Right. Oh, right. church is the people. Yeah, actually, actually. Um, one great sort of phrase my mom will use, or question my mom will use when she meets someone, finds out they're a Christian, she will say, "Where do you worship?" Yeah, and just that sense yeah, yeah. that, of course, the the Conevo critique is uh, worships the whole of life, twenty four seven. Actually, but to gather 
for worship as a yeah. as the conscious act of the church to and and that point of worship then becomes the place in which we're refreshed by the gospel as you said hearing the prayers of someone who is who is praying yeah. with a with a rich theological understanding and with adoration and with yeah with worship you know when we boil when we teach kids to pray you know we 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 will do um teaspoon prayers tsp mm. thank you sorry please yeah as you know be, or because pst for pst could have a word <laughs> <laughs> sorry just if you want another one <laughs> please sorry thank you but where's um, i love you you know like like <laughs> yeah, in, ter- yeah, in terms yeah, yeah. of um yeah thank you sorry please are all phrases that you teach children from very early on mm-hmm. i love you is also one. yeah 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 and it's also a massive part of prayer yeah but yeah. we boil things down so adoration is, is mm-hmm. has no longer you know got a place for us well thank you for this conversation sorry that uh, it's <laughs> taken up so much of other people's time and uh please join us again uh wow. we love you we love uh, you <laughs> so we we'll lo- that's ma- mainly we love you uh we'll finish there thank you very much glenn thanks Nate. bye bye